Good morning and welcome to worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church on this All Saints Sunday. We're glad that you have joined us either in person or online. Today, as part of our worship, I hope that each of you have received a small card like this. We invite you to write the names of those loved ones you would like to memorialize and then place this card on the chapel altar. There are candles that you also may light to memorialize those, and we invite you to do that during our opening hymn and immediately following communion and following the postlude. Our liturgy today begins with the order of confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Revelation chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressing me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have, been, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And for he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Our second reading is from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. 
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will, be see, we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Word of God, word of life. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator, from Jesus our Lord and Savior, and from God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Most of us know the Beatitudes pretty well. And I think we greatly love them. They are beautiful. They dance and sing on your lips every time you say them. They are immortal. And we have just heard them read again today in the Gospel for All Saints Sunday. But beautiful as these words are, most of us do not get very excited about poverty of spirit, mourning, meekness, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, mercifulness, purity of heart, peacemaking, and persecution for righteousness' sake. Does that really excite you? We become enthusiastic about qualities and values that are quite different from those expressed in the Beatitudes. That word, blessed, in the Beatitudes today literally means happy. But the qualities expressed in the Beatitudes are not the common understanding of what we think it means to be happy. 
Happiness in our generation is a psychological state of inward satisfaction. And the aim of happiness is to feel good about ourselves and our lives. But just like the rising and setting of the sun, happiness seems to come and go. And it's rarely constant. Although we chase after happiness for all we are worth, happiness, just like unlike blessedness, is dependent on a lot of external factors. But blessedness, on the other hand, is deeper and far more inward than happiness. It is a state of being that has its roots in God. Blessedness comes because our life is dependent upon God. It is a gift from God, which according to the New Testament, comes to those who suffer because of faithfulness. Blessedness is not a Hollywood kind of happiness. Instead, blessedness refers to a deep, abiding happiness that can neither be given nor taken away by the world. It is well-being and prosperity, the gift God gives to all people. So today, I invite you to focus on just one part of these Beatitudes, this phrase, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Notice that Jesus did not say, blessed are the poor. Jesus knew that blessedness was not tied to material poverty. The poor are not automatically happy just as the wealthy are not automatically blessed. According to our Christian faith, happiness comes from the inside out and not from the outside in. It's not the kind of house that a person lives in, but the kind of person that lives in the house. That's what really matters. It's not the kind of clothing that a person wears, but the kind of person wearing the clothing. That's what really counts. It's not the kind of church that a person goes to, but the kind of person inside the church. That is what has ultimate significance. So by saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus was driving at something very fundamental, very basic. Jesus was saying, happy are those people who feel their spiritual poverty. If a person is poor, that person feels his or her poverty. Poverty is not academic. It's not ethereal. But it's deeply felt inside of that human being. Therefore, Jesus meant, blessed are those persons who feel their spiritual poverty. In other words, Jesus was saying that we must first accept that spiritual poverty before we can begin any kind of spiritual reformation. And notice what Jesus did not say. Jesus did not say, blessed are those who have it all together. <laughs> Jesus did not say, blessed are those who always have the right answers. Jesus did not say, blessed are the people who have it all wrapped up 
and tied in a bowl so that they understand it. Jesus did not say, blessed are the people who are certain of themselves. Jesus did not say, blessed are the people who have made sense out of everything. He did not say, blessed are the people who think they have it right on target every minute all the time. He did not say, blessed are the know-it-alls. But Jesus did say, Blessed are those who know they don't have it all put together. Blessed are those who are not certain and yet who keep questing. Blessed are those who are uncertain of themselves and yet seek certainty. Blessed are those who know that they've missed the mark and yet keep trying to find a better way. The acceptance of this spiritual poverty is our first step to blessedness. Consider this possibility. Those who are hungry for God, those who have an appetite for the spiritual, those who are honestly seeking and questing, they are the ones closer to God than the people who feel spiritually full, spiritually satisfied. The reasoning of this world begs you and me to live a style of life that is contrary to the Beatitudes. Our society teaches that blessedness comes by a different route. And the voices of our day say, blessed are those who are full. Blessed are those who are rich. Blessed are those who are successful. Blessed are those who are satisfied. Blessed are those who hold and wield power. Blessed are the beautiful people. Blessed are those who are upwardly mobile. Blessed are those who live on the sunny side of the street. Blessed are those who are not sick or frail, who do not make mistakes, and who never experience the rejection of others because of a stand or position they have taken. And here is the great difference. You and I are called to listen to another voice, a voice that invites us to stand empty before our God. A voice that clearly came to our ancestors in faith and they heard it and they listened and they responded and they turned it over to us. And now we hear that voice today and that voice says, blessed are the poor in spirit for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen.
Let us turn our hearts to God, our breath and life, as we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, the church triumphant gathers around your throne to praise you. We join them in worship and remember your sustaining grace in every generation. Heal our divisions. Show us unity in your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Our mercy is great. Holy Creator, we marvel at your creation revealed in the cycle of seasons, changing landscapes, and the rise and fall of ocean tides. Turn us from selfish consumption and open us to gentle healing of the earth so all creation thrives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Advocate, we lift grateful hearts for the ability to vote and elect leaders. Grant wisdom to those who will be elected and safety to poll workers. May civic leaders serve the whole community, especially all who are underrepresented or oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy healer, bless the brokenhearted and all who mourn. Send your compassion to all who grieve. Grant wholeness to those who are sick and accompany the dying. Be near to all who need you especially B.J. Wells, Felicia Singleton, Albert Martinez, and Kai Force. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Comforter, we pray for this congregation that the promise of your new life may be shared and experienced. We pray for the funeral ministry of this congregation, that families and friends seeking your love find it here. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, for the saints who now rest in your mercy, we give you thanks. We remember their witness of faithfulness and love. We remember today Ed Corley, Marion Jacobson, Kathleen King, Matthew Brood, Guy Martin, and for those we hold in our hearts. Praise to you for the eternal life that they have been given through Jesus Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace.
God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For distribution today, we invite all communicants to come forward and then receive the elements and go to your right into the chapel. You'll have an opportunity to add a card with loved ones' names and to light a candle and to spend a moment in reflection then please return to your seat as you are able. You at the banquet, come and feast at Jesus' table.
Please stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey, strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children, and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Again, thank you for joining us at worship here on all Saints Sunday. If you have not had an opportunity to light a candle or to place a remembrance card on the altar, you're welcome to do that in the chapel following worship today. Pastor Scott is on vacation this morning. I'm Pastor Jim Bessie, and it's my privilege to have been with you and to preside at this worship service today. Our announcements this morning are, first of all, a reminder that our noisy offering in the month of November is scheduled to be given to Lutheran Social Services here in Long Beach. That is a multifaceted program that we support along with our sister congregations in the area that um, provides emergency assistance to many. So your generosity and support is encouraged for that. We have a fellowship time following worship today. We invite you to join us in the fellowship hall immediately after worship as your schedule allows. Please continue to remember in prayer those who were mentioned in worship today. Those names are included in the worship bulletins. Are there other announcements that need to be shared at this time? If not, then I invite you to stand for the blessing. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit be with you today and always. When the sea 